Our text for today is taken from the book of Genesis, chapter 5. We'll begin reading with verse 18 and read through verse 24. Genesis 5, 18. Jared lived 162 years and begot Enoch. After he begot Enoch, Jared lived 800 years and had sons and daughters. So all the days of Jared were 962 years and he died. Enoch lived 65 years and begot Methuselah. After he begot Methuselah, Enoch walked with God 300 years and had sons and daughters. So all the days of Enoch were 365 years. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. And may God bless the reading of his word today. The young boy was walking down the street with a monkey sitting up on his shoulder. And he met a policeman. And the policeman said, son, it's against the law for you to have that type of animal without a leash on it. But I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you a break. If you'll take that monkey over to the zoo, I won't arrest you. And the young boy said, I'll do it. I'll take him over right now. Next day came around, same boy walking down the same street, had the same monkey sitting up on the same shoulder, and he met the same policeman. And the policeman wasn't too happy. He said, son, I thought we had a deal. I thought we had an agreement. You were supposed to take that monkey to the zoo and I wouldn't arrest you. But you still got the monkey up on your shoulder, so I'm going to run you in. And the young boy said, wait, wait, officer, let me explain now. I did take this monkey to the zoo yesterday. Today I'm taking him to the movies, and tomorrow I'm taking him to a ball game. <laughs> now, the lesson of that little story is about who we should not walk around with. But our text today has just the opposite lesson. Our text today is about who we should walk around with. And that is, of course, our God. Our example for this is the man named Enoch. For verse 22 tells us that Enoch walked with God. And by the way, this is the first time in God's word that someone is credited with actually walking with him. Now before we look at his walk with God, let me tell you what I think it means to walk with God. It means to live for God. Live for God. The definition is very simple, but the doing of it is not very simple, is it? But that's what I think walking with God is. It's living for God day by day and moment by moment. So now let's look first of all at the commencement of Enoch's walk with God. Verse 21 says that he lived 65 years and then he and his wife begot Methuselah. But now note verse 22 and look at it carefully. After he begot Methuselah, it says he walked with God 300 years. Do you see the difference there? He was already living and had been for 65 years, but his walk with God began, commenced, and started with the birth of his first child. So in Enoch's life, it was a triumph that started him walking with God. In my life, I have found four things that start people walking with God. Like Enoch, a time of triumph does it for some people. With some people, it takes a time of trial to start them walking with God. With some people, it takes a time of tragedy to start them walking with God. And with some people, it takes a time of temptation to get them to walk with God. Different strokes for different folks. Different times and events Different circumstances and conditions start people really walking with God. With me, 
It was similar to Enoch. I was saved by God when I was 11. But I didn't really start walking with God until I was 26. And what happened at that time? The birth of our first child. Just as Enoch holding Methuselah started him walking with God, it was me holding Leanne that got me to start walking with God. You look back at your walk with God, and if you're really walking with God, you can recall and remember that time when that walk really started. You can recall that event and experience in your life that got you started on that walk with God. So that's the commencement of the walk. Now let's look at the continuation of the walk. Our text goes on to tell us that Enoch walked with God 300 years for all the days of his remaining time on earth. Enoch walked with God on a consistent, constant, continuous basis. His walk with God was steady and stable strong and sturdy, not in spurts. His walk with God was not stop and go, up or down, in or out, yea or nay, pro or con. Through good times and bad times, through sunny days or stormy days, through glad times or sad times, through sick times or healthy times, the man kept right on walking with God. Through all the trials, triumphs, tragedies, and temptations that had to have come his way over 300 years, he kept right on walking with God. And it didn't matter what the rest of his world was doing, what other people did, he kept right on walking with God. And it wasn't easy for Enoch to walk with God. For he didn't live in the Garden of Eden. He lived in a time when there was much wickedness on this earth for you only have to go over one more chapter in Genesis and you have to get out the umbrella, don't you? Because that's when God sent the flood of judgment. My point is, it is never easy to walk with God on a continuous basis no matter what time it is. But this man did it for 300 years. Not 300 minutes, hours, days, weeks, or months, but for three full centuries. The true test of anything or anyone, be it a man or a machine, is time. Time always tells the truth. Time always tells the tale. You can't fool Father Time. And when it came to Enoch's walk with God, he passed the test of time with flying colors. And then we note the consequence of his walk with God. It's found at the end of verse 24. God took him. Where did God take him? To the zoo? The movies? The ball game? Out to lunch? No. No, you know where God took Enoch. He took him up to his real home in heaven. He took him to continue walking with him, but now he's going to walk on streets of gold. He took him to walk with him in work and worship and service and joy for the rest of eternity. He took Enoch away from all the evil and wickedness on this earth. He took Enoch away from dealing with any more trials, tragedies, or temptations. He took Enoch away from any more sickness, sadness, or sorrow, from any more pain, pressures, problems, or perils, from any more stress or strain, from any more anger or anxiety, from any more cares and concerns, and from any more frustrations, frights, and fears. Oh yes, God took Enoch. He took him all the way up to heaven and all the way into heaven. To borrow the title of the song from the fifth dimension, God took Enoch up, up, and away. And you know why he took Enoch up there? Because Enoch walked with him down here. He took him up there because he had walked with him down here. 
Now, why did I bring this particular message on this particular day? Two reasons. One reason was this young lady right here. When I think of Enoch's walk with God, I think of Miss Betty's walk with God. Now, let me say real quick, I'm not implying you're 300 years of age. Okay? Let's not have any misunderstanding here. But other than that, when I look at Enoch's walk with God, I see your walk with God. I see a day in, day out walk with God. A continuous, consistent, constant walk with God. And through your life, like all of us, you have trials, you've had trials, you've had tragedies, and you've had temptations. But no matter what you had, you kept right on walking with God. And it didn't matter what everyone else is doing, didn't matter what our culture society was doing, you kept right on walking with God. So that's why I brought this message on the one hand. When I think of Enoch's walk with God, I think of your walk with God. But the second reason I brought this message is to ask the rest of you, who or what are you walking around with? Now, I haven't seen anybody lately walking around with a monkey on their shoulder. But you know, I've seen some folks walking around with a chip on their shoulder. And I've seen a lot of folks walking around with a lot of other things and a lot of other people on their shoulder. But we all know who we should be walking around with, don't we? Amen. With God. And not on our shoulder, but in our heart and in our head. So my question to you is, are you walking around with God? If not, how do you start? You give him your hand. Because you see, he's got his hand. That big hand with the nail prints in it, he's got his hand reaching out to you. And if you'll put your hand in his hand, if you'll put your life in his hand, your walk with God will begin. And my friend, I promise you this. You walk with God and you will never regret it. Amen. Not for a moment down here and for sure, not for a moment up there.